You're listening to Makeup. I'm Quincy. And I'm Kay. Ooh. Look at my teeth. <laughs> and I'm Kay. And this is a podcast where I teach Quincy a little bit about Marvel. And I teach Kay a little bit about makeup. Watch out. There are major MCU spoilers ahead. Oh, so many spoilers, uh, particularly for this episode. I yes. feel like. Because we are coming to the end of phase three with Avengers end game um the past couple of weeks we did watch alongs and reactions to the movie and this is our uh total wrap-up talk about the movie overall um and yeah we're gonna dive into end game um a little bit about end game it was released on april 26 2019 it was directed by Anthony and Joe Russo and written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. It was the- also the year I finally figured out <laughs> that I should pay attention. <laughs> I just remember that that year ish came. Uh-huh. Everyone going like Endgame, Endgame, Marvel's Endgame, Endgame. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so what is going on? Yeah. So it was also because of this movie, it was the first time Avengers kind of got on your radar like I knew about the Avengers but like I just didn't like you know and I knew it was a big deal and I know I knew people there was superhero movies and Captain America and Hulk and you know I I just wasn't aware of how big the franchise had grown I was aware that people were like me Marvel and like some people were like yeah Marvel and but you know just paid it no mind and then this was the year because I just remember like everybody was buzzing about it and I was like what what like, did I miss something? <laughs> a little bit, like 20, 22 ish movies, 21 movies <laughs> that led up to this movie. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, that makes sense that it finally kind of like broke through because it is the epic conclusion of the Infinity Saga, as they call it. The um, longest TV show in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, as I mentioned, directed by the Russo brothers, written by Marcus and McFeely, who brought us infinity war winter soldier and civil war so a a team of people that had been working together in the mcu for a while um and a little bit about 2019 in general um you know there's this great line at the end of endgame where tony post post his spoiler alert post his death is giving his own eulogy and he's like you know, the thing about endings is that that they're also beginnings. So I just wanted to point out some endings and beginnings that happened in 2019. Oh, (laughs) Quincy, your face. (laughs) No, it's just like, okay, first of all, of course he would give his own fucking eulogy. Like, Uh of course. uh Mm -hmm. But like, what a poignant... Yeah, man, that is... Sorry, I'm just... As you said that, like, what a beautiful way to end the movie. The end of the movie and the movie franchise. Well, and the thing is, is like, that was kind of the big question in terms of what was going to happen in the MCU anyways. Like, all these movies building up to this one big story. Now that that's over, it's like, now what? You know? Question, like, at one point, were the fans saying, thinking that? Like, were you thinking that leading up to Endgame? Or was it like you watched the movie and like the the spark of it kind of faded and then you were like, oh, now is it over? No, but for me, it probably didn't land until the next movie came out or the next movie that was going to come out was about to come out because that's when you start asking those questions. So Endgame finishes the infinity saga but there's still one more movie in, in I, phase oh, three so people people were like okay there's one more movie so that it didn't yeah. that didn't hit okay got it so but but and it's the the second spider-man spider-man yes. far from home so when you we got closer to that movie we we're like okay now now yeah now this is gonna have to set up what's gonna be coming because all these stories had wrapped up by the, the previous movie, you know? Mm. Um, but you, we'll definitely get into that. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. in terms of current events in 2019, endings and beginnings, um, some TV shows ended like Game of Thrones, Big Bang Theory, Veep, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, wow. Yeah, big shows. Um, and then some movie, some TV shows premiered um, like Euphoria, 
Pen15 and The Mass Singer, which I, you know I what? actually I watch. I love The Mass Singer. I'll sometimes on Facebook get clips of it and I kind of love it. I kind of love it a lot. I, I, I watch it. I don't, well, I watch it quote unquote. I will, I watch only the performances and then the reveal at the end. So I yeah. fast forward there, everything else. <laughs> it's just fun. And then it's just fun to watch the judges reactions when they yeah. get it wrong or, it, you know, it's just fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, some premieres that happened. Um, also, Trevor Noah took over the Daily Show in 2019. Oh, wow. um, it was the end of the Katy Perry Taylor Swift beef. Um, apparently, they had beef and they were in a bit of feud, but then they did a, a music video called You Need to Calm Down Together, which kind of represented the ending of that feud. Um, and then the, the first Sorry, images- as like as someone. You need to calm down is really triggering for me as someone who doesn't <laughs> like to be told to calm down when I'm agitated, <laughs> but I'm glad they were able to make peace. Uh, yeah, I think it was more them like it was I think it was the Taylor Swift song. I forget. I should have just I should have looked more before I use this. It's this. no, it's okay. fine. It's um, fine. And then uh, the first the images of the first black hole or the first images of a black hole were uh, taken. Um, Apple TV and Disney Plus launched in 2019, um, which introduced specifically on Disney Plus Baby Yoda in The Mandalorian. Um, And then it also uh, that year is the same year that Martin Scorsese gave his um, very public statement about his a view of Marvel films, calling them theme parks and not cinema. Um, so a, a debate that still happens today. So, you know, uh, a few endings and beginnings that were happening in 2019. But uh, let's go ahead and dive into this major ending slash beginning called Endgame. Um we, me and Quincy watched it together. There were a lot of tears. Actually, I can't remember because <laughs> <Yeah>. I just. <laughs> um, what 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 did you, what were your thoughts? What was your hot take? What did you, what did you come away from it feeling, thinking, Quincy? I, I think one of the things I took away from was, and we talked about this, especially viewing it not in theaters. Mm. That this was definitely a movie to watch in theaters. Yep. And the first thing, maybe I'm starting at the end and going, we'll go backwards. But I just remember when the f- big finale scene happens where everyone comes through, I was like, man, people must have been losing their mind. Well, yeah. Case in point, I sent Quincy a couple videos. Uh, one of them was reaction of an audience in theater. Did, did you watch that? Yes. And I was like, did this person know? How did this person know? Like, this was like Robert Downey Jr. Like, in theaters being like, oh, I'm going to get these guys. <laughs> you know gonna like, but it was it was great because, like, everyone was fully invested. Um, and I had seen that video before when mm. the elections were running around. Uh, funnily enough, I watched the 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 meme video again. And so when I watched it in the election, you're talking about the election one where yeah, yeah, yeah where everyone gets their face photoshopped in. Um, yeah. So I, so we're talking about the video where uh you know and after the election 2020, you know, the final battle scene got memed where Donald Trump was Thanos and then all like the Democratic people in charge were the Avengers and their faces were on the Avengers faces and they were yeah. like you know, coming together to defeat Trump. Yeah, it was great to see the rea- reaction video because that's what I 100% would have done. Probably would have mm-hmm. started screaming earlier. Um, but it was interesting because I watched the the meme video and I cried, Kay. Oh, you uh, did? Last year, I uh, laughed at it. Like, even though I didn't really understand the like, context, <laughs> I understood what the joke was. I think this year... Uh, today, when I watched it in terms of the context of after the Capitol riots and understanding the importance of this scene in the movie, it just really made me cry because it's wow. it's it was what happened was fucked up, you know. And so, you know, um, it, yeah, it just ma- really made me cry. But it it was it was really good. It was satisfying and it was great because the movie um even though I knew that what scene was going to at one point be there, it like didn't 
I wasn't like, oh, it wasn't I didn't, I, I, I didn't I, yeah, I didn't anticipate it still. Okay. You know, it still came as a, a yummy, nice surprise. It was satisfying. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. yeah. Especially since, you know, you were just hearing like Twitters about it, like end game, end game, and game. When you finally watched it, did you, re- did you have the feeling of like, oh, I get it now. Mm-hmm, like I can understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And especially because the movie starts so dark, mm, right. And yeah. you don't know which way they're going to take you. And so I thought it, it's, it was great. Like, just cause it starts so dark and generally speaking, I feel like the most of the structure for the Marvel movies have, has, has not been that dark as far no. as like the characters being in a place of abject, like depression about what they're going to do and their future. I would agree as, as someone who tends to think of the Marvel movies as actually comedic leaning with action and not as much dramatic. Um, I would say Endgame is the most dramatic uh, movie in the MCU. Um, and, you know, speaking of the beginning, you have that scene with Hawkeye and his family getting dusted. Um, fun fact, the girl, uh, Lila, uh, that he's teaching to, you know, shoot the, the bow and arrow, uh, that is Ava Russo, who's actually daughter of Joe Russo, oh, one really of the cool. directors. Um, and she's is actually she in the new Hawkeye. She series? is. She okay. is. She's also in the new <laughs> series as well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look, I've learned it. So you'll have all this, no- all this knowledge as we move forward. Um, it's o- It's almost like 22 movies is it was worth the investment um yeah and then you know then they get dusted and and they actually um had planned to put that move that scene in infinity war um kind of i think as an after credit but then they didn't want to they changed their minds and instead put it at the top of this movie to kind of remind everyone it's like this is where we're at um and also it kind of emphasizes um, and supports kind of Hawkeye's change later in the movie when he like is going after the Yakuza um, as, and, and they didn't specifically say this, but the character that he kind of becomes uh, the name of that vigilante is Ronan. Um, and that also plays down the line in terms of like, kind of like Hawkeye's uh, character arc. Um, so, yeah. And then we cut to space with Tony and Nebula, kind of a fun a fun time, not a fun time, but like a fun uh, pairing there. There's definitely some sexual tension between what? them. Coming from so? Nebula? from Coming from Nebula. Like she was crushing on him a little bit. I feel like. I thought I that was, was a th- thread they were going to pull a little harder. Yeah. You didn't think that? No, I, I totally like was She was like, kind of like a, like a kid, like a younger, younger sister feel. Who had a crush on him. Uh- <laughs> I felt like I she guess, totally was crushing on him a little bit. Like, I guess for Nebula, it's crushing as in she's not like completely hating. Him. No, I thought she had a crush on him. Like, and, and obviously it's not, it's Nebula. So it's not going to be like, oh, right. But like, yeah. she's going to, she, I thought she was, you know, with the proximity of being alone with this person. And like, it's, I guess it's more, um, what happens thing? in space stays in space. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, what's that thing where like you're, you fall in love with your captors. Oh yeah. The, uh, I always forget I know what it. you're talking about. Yeah. 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 I thought it was something it was, I mean, I think it was more like a beauty that, and the beast situation. Yeah. I thought okay. it was a little bit, but I was huh. like, Oh, there's like, mm, I feel like she's kind of like, she'd be open to it. I, I would say that she, she definitely was as warm as Nebula gets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree um, with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, then, you know, they get saved by Captain Marvel, get taken back down. Um, Tony, very, very skinny in that scene. I almost thought it was kind of a weird, like callback to kind of like skinny Steve. It's like skinny Steve at the beginning. And then we have skinny Tony. Um, and that. then that's great. Actually. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and those tensions rising again from civil war, Tony and um, Steve arguing. Um, and then, you know, they end up going, going and killing Thanos, actually killing him to try to get, to get the infinity shores, but it's a failure because he already um, uh, uh, got rid of them. And then we cut to five years later. Um, now in terms of timeline. So since this, us. Uh, uh, starts right at the end of Infinity War, which happens in 2018. Um, the idea is it's five years after 2018. So everything that happens in Endgame and past Endgame happens in 2023. Yeah. Ooh, so that's something to keep in mind moving forward. Like 
in at the present in end game is like 2023 which okay you know is cool. next not next year but the year after years. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 cool um so yeah and then you know it's it's finally starts getting a little lighter as we find ant-man coming back into the fold um i was listening to the commentary on the blu-ray for endgame and they joke uh the writers and directors were joking how the true hero of endgame is actually the rat who is in the van and you know crawls on the on the the machine so ant-man can actually you know get out of the quantum zone oh so you know it, it, it they were just joking but you know it's kind of when you think about how like Dr. Yeah. Strange was like, there's only one, there's only one where uh, all this works. And perhaps this is the one where they actually had the rat. <laughs> oh, that's you know? so interesting. I was, I thought you were going to say Ant-Man was the hero, and I was going to say yes. <laughs> and then, Paul Rudd. <laughs> yes. And Paul Rudd is just, you know, uh, the hero of our, of our, of everyone's universe who loves uh, a comedy and a, uh, Paul Rudd. I think if I was in college, mm-hmm. I would have a huge poster of his face. Right now? On my wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It's I interesting how like good. I would just look at it and feel good. Like if I had a bad day, I'd look at him and be like, look at him. He's so happy. Yeah. It makes me wonder, like, you know, Paul Rudd, he was in Clueless, which is like an iconic yeah. 90s movie. Yeah, it was a little awkward because isn't he isn't he like the stepbrother? Yeah, they but they fall in love, and I was like, okay, this is a little weird. Also, he looked like old enough to be her, like, um, like dad. It was just it's the only time he's ever looked old, I think. <laughs> in, in, oh, okay, in Clueless, yeah, because he looks way younger than Cher. She looks younger than him. Yeah, like way younger. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, see, that's interesting because he's had such a long career, and you would think that, like, w- at what point did Paul Rudd like? Was it he at his peak? And I'm wondering, is that now? Is this Paul peak Paul Rudd? Yes, he just got voted sexiest man alive. Uh, yeah, I guess so. 2021. Uh, but yeah, this but, has you know, to be peak. How old is he? Like 50 something? Hold on, I, need I to have look no this idea. <laughs> you could never tell by looking at Paul Rudd's face. 52. How old he is. He's 52. Wow. 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 And now and now he's he's heartthrob. He's, He's like a heartthrob. Wow. Yeah. Men are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true. True. They uh they have a lot of advantages in this world. <laughs> um 52 yeah. year old heartthrob. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so anyways, Ant-Man comes back into the fold. We get our first community camo- cameo and Ken Jong um being the, the security guard in that uh warehouse. Um and then by the way, I was hoping for more. I was hoping for a little bit more Ken Jong. Oh, like really? I forgot he was doing a cameo with the Russo brothers. I was just hoping like just a little bit more. <laughs> well, um, there might be a deleted scene. I might, I may, I might be able to check that down for you. There might have been a deleted scene. Um and then he shows up at the Avengers uh, campus and has that great scene where he's like talking about like, oh, you know, what happened to him and kind of. And again, I was listening to the commentary. They talked a lot about how like, you know, this is that scene. There was kind of like a lot of exposition and they were trying to figure out the best way to you know insert the exposition. So for what section? Uh, the, where he shows up at the Avengers campus and he's telling them about how he's been stuck in the quantum. Oh, realm. yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, and so. Basically, they talked about how like his uh, speech there, it kind of just it was kind of representative of what they were doing in the writer's room. And they're trying to come up with the idea of like how to solve this problem. And they were like, time travel. That's crazy. I know it's crazy, but it's kind of the idea that we're going with. And so that they kind of infused that into that scene and then, you know, added the fact that like, you know, Paul Rudd just found out what happened and there's all these stakes and and how he's realizing that he actually is the one person who can have, have the answer to this thing that he's just kind of just been thrusted into. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting point. What did you think about that scene? I, I really love the two who was just like, is that your sandwich? Can I have that sandwich? Like, I think so we Paul talked Rudd. about it in uh, the watch along, like sometimes when I watch comedy movies, I try to figure out what was improvised mm-hmm. and it felt like such an improvised 
thing that I I think they said that that was written line. The sandwich Our, line was written. Kudos to them because that was such a funny line and it was such a like on point Paul Red line. Ugh, yeah, God, yeah. I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> it was great. I wish we could just have him do that for like ten more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a, a lot of movies, so they had to keep going. So you have, you know, slowly them coming back together. You have the scene with Smart Hulk. You have them going to Tony. Oh, um, Smart Hulk was really funny, too. Yeah, right? Yeah, just that whole scene where he has to, like, he, like, begrudgingly bashes things because he's, like, above that now. <laughs> when they're back in the New York. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. kind of like a grumpy middle school kid with the fuse <laughs> thing, you know, like, he won't act out anymore, but, like, he'll, like, complain, right? It's like telling a 12-year-old to do the dishes, right? They're not going to be like, <laughs> no, but, like, they'll do it, but they'll be like, Ugh the whole time <laughs> rolling his eyes mm-hmm. at, at himself really mm-hmm. what he used to be like yeah um yeah and then you know then you have them running you know going to tony and asking tony for help and you know establishing that he has a family now and he doesn't want to sacrifice it and uh the the line i love you 3000 oh, which God. gets established yeah which totally became a meme after but you um, gutted me gutted yeah. me at the end when we watched it okay it just gutted me just that callback was so good it gutted me yeah yeah so many so many callbacks that they you know set up in this movie but also bring from back from other movies mm-hmm. um you know because it's a whole universe um yeah so uh what's next oh they start uh, they go and they get Thor who's in new Asgard and is going through it, you know, dealing with his, his failure and, and put on, put on some weight, you know, they call, they called, used to call him fat Thor, but then they switched it to bro Thor because they were like, let's not, you know, be dismissive towards, you know, people of size. Um, and then they have that huge, uh, oh, and then, and they, and then, uh, widow goes and gets Hawkeye who is, mm. um, killing people in the name of uh, revenge because his family got dusted and all the bad people who didn't he's just like well i'm got you now i also think making thor comedic was i think one of the favorite turns watching this like he's chris hemsworth is so funny yeah yeah and and to have his character go from that kind of like serious egotistical over yeah yeah he takes himself too character seriously in the original movies and then you know obviously ragnarok was a huge turning point in terms of the tone of that character and, and their that franchise um but yeah they're continuing with that tone through endgame um and you know and he ends up kind of being kind of close with the the guardians by the end so it's interesting how they've been able to meld you know the different franchises and different stories so what to just find like complementing characters even though they've been like disparate before this um yeah um and yeah and then they're all kind of brought back together um i will say you know uh that relationship with hawkeye and widow where widow comes and like you know gives him hope uh, was is always kind of like heart wrenching for me, especially when you remember you realize what's going to happen to them down the line and you remind them of like kind of brings back their whole relationship of like, you know, uh, Hawkeye saved widow from, you know, uh, uh, being, being part of the, the widows and kind of helped her get out of that lifestyle. And they've been, they, they're, you know, they always talk about Budapest and how they kind of, uh, have worked together for so long as part of shield. Oh my God. Is that what black widows movies about it? There is references to that. It is about black widow. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say that. I'll say that. It's it's about black widow. So everything related to black widow is, is on the table. Um, (laughs) I will. And, you know, once we get to the end, I want to uh, that's when we can start talking about what's going to happen next, because sure, 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 sure. There, there are seeds. Um, and then, you know, you have that big brainstorm scene where they put together the time heist and they're like, OK, we're, we're going over every single uh, uh, stone and we're remembering where they're at. And they put together their plan, which for us who have seen all the movies 
it becomes such a, um, you know, a rewarding experience because they're going back to times we've already seen and we're getting to see, you know, a different side of those movies. Now, when they were going back to those different sections, did you, how, how easy was it for you to be like, oh yeah, this is when such and such happened or this is from such and such. Yeah, it was pretty easy to follow. It was also very fun to see the BTS scenes of like what was happening. I think it was like very similar to Harry Potter number four. When they time travel and you're seeing the kids run around. Um, It was fun and it was very memorable. And I think too, they're very good at one setting it up. So you got to see, I, I believe the scene the movie was from or the whatever you, you you know what I'm saying? Um, you saw the setup of like, Oh, this is that iconic scene from this movie. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then introduced the, the current timeline bless you. Um, and, uh, sorry, my dog sneezed. Um, and yeah, I, I was able to remember, I sometimes I think got the titles mixed up, um, cause they now start to smush a little bit. Um, but it's really cool. Like it was great to see, I don't know. It was it was even wonderful to see how the characters slash actors felt different. Yeah. To like the iconic the Avengers scene, the fi- fight scene. Like, yeah, they even felt different from. Well, and especially when, you know, they became they started to interact with them. Um, you know, you have uh, in New York, you have um, <laughs> you have uh, Bruce seeing himself as full Hulk and being like, oh, like, uh, fine, I'll do some growling. I'll do some smashing. Um, You have uh, kind of Loki and and Thor kind of still having that brotherly kind of like, you know, uh, you know, sibling rivalry. What? Loki ran off with the Tesseract. Yes. And we didn't get to see that storyline finish. But he has... A TV show. I know. I literally pieced it together. So, oh, so oh, look that's at me. Piece look at you. You, you, you. The threads are coming together. Yes. So, you know, when we're talking about what's next, you already were seeing the seeds of what's to come. And right. yeah, and Loki, the TV series, uh, which came out this past year, that's where that picks up. Wow. It yeah. was this past year that it wow, it feels like ages. It felt it feels it feels like it came out last year. I mean time has been mush. <laughs> well, yeah, last year, you know, was 2020. We're still yeah. in 2021 in our current timeline. And and that was the only year that no Marvel properties were released mm-hmm, um mm-hmm, since mm-hmm. the beginning of the MCU. So yeah, so all the stuff save for the next movie that's the end of phase three, the next Spider-Man. After that, everything else that has come out since Endgame and since the end of Phase Three mm. has been in 2021. Wow! 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 Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then ba- back in New York, we also have uh, Steve Rogers fighting Steve Rogers, <laughs> and so you get to see the difference That's between great. him and then there, him like the soldier, and you know, being the the uh, you know very goody two shoes version of myself being like did I we, can do this all day in that fight scene did we see if the fight styles were different I wonder if that's something like they went I bet they did as far as like well you know I, I he guess was a different person than he was such a like nerd and like this one has seen and done a lot and he realizes what a nerd he is and so I'm wondering if that infused the fight choreography Mm, I, I wonder I'm not sure it, I didn't you know just watching it that didn't stand out to me no, but you know but, he, but he does use the knowledge of Bucky yes. being alive yes, to yes, yes, finish yes. off the fight yes um so yeah so that would be something interesting to wonder if they slightly tweaked the the choreography yeah. that was really cool that he did that um and then the heel hydra thing which is like nuts because you know that was like a you know obviously a strategy strategy he did mm-hmm. but like then it like makes you wonder what like nerdy captain america phase one captain america would would he would he have even done that Oh no! You know, like not been at okay all. with using that strategy to you, you know like yeah I know I think he wouldn't have even 
uh, a he wouldn't have known to and b he wouldn't have had like the stealthy strategic kind yeah, of like like think mindset. on your feet like let's like oh i know yeah 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 he yeah he would have like muscled his way through yeah that. yeah and did you notice how that scene was a direct call back to the scene in winter soldier where they're all the elevator, the elevator. Scene? Yes. yes 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 that was so satisfying to see yeah yeah, yeah. i wish they had let us nut and given us a like in a homo- like homage that further oh and do the fight some version of the fight scene a little bit of fighting you want to know yeah little bit of fighting? But i know they needed to like <laughs> build that tension to mm-hmm. get that heel hot hot um heel um hydra Hail hydra yeah uh line out um but it would have been nice if they fought like a little bit <laughs> just a little that fight, that fight scene was great that elevator fight scene from that movie was fantastic. oh yeah it's it's yeah classic it's one of the the uh, best i yeah. would say best captain america fights definitely yeah. um out of all the movies um and then just other stuff that happens in new york you know you have robert redford showing up you have uh them messing up the fact that hulk comes down the stairs and he's being his baby self and then he knocks tony aside and loki escapes the tesseract so they're forced to go to new, Jer- new jersey in the end and time travel again um which we'll get to in a second um and then then you have the asgard portion where you have thor running into his mom renee russo who you know you know she had such a great piece in Dor- dark uh thor dark world but it was so short <laughs> and i really appreciated how they brought her back and you really got to see you know more of her relationship with him yeah um especially since the movie was so much more focused on kind of like Odin and him wanting to prove himself to Odin to hit the dad character. Also because like the mother dying to both brothers meant so much and struck such an emotional core that we didn't get to see at all. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I knew their loss. But I do think like had they explored that more, we would have felt their sense of loss even more because like yeah. she obviously meant a lot to them. But yeah, they we didn't get to see a whole lot of her versus like Odin passing away meant more in terms of like uh, who they had to become, right? Versus like the mom dying was like them maybe letting go who they were. Yeah. Well, and that becomes kind of like her greatest lesson who just like, even when watching it now, I was just like, wow, that's really, that's really deep. Like, (laughs) I'm like, I need to remember that. Like, don't be who you think you're supposed to be, be who you are. Like that's, that is red. That resonates like just in life, you know, any life. Like who am I trying to protect? tend to be yeah yeah who and and that's and you get and makes you I? ask yourself like who am i really you yeah. know yeah, yeah um who do we ever know who we really are I um we get glimpses i think we get glimpses here and there yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then you know it's also the question of like do you get to choose who you are you know how much power do you personally have in terms of forging your own identity it's 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 deep stuff man mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm part of me is just like mm, i wish i wish marina russo was kind of like you know i wish a version <laughs> of a frida was like her a on therapist like speed, uh, yeah, yeah speed dial just be like mom friga therapy you know. <laughs> <laughs> therapy brought to you by a witch of the uh-huh. asgardian <laughs> yep, 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 yep. uh royalty um that, that'd be a fun sketch friga therapy um and then, and yeah, and then they wrap up that scene with, you know, him be still being worthy of the hammer and then getting the hammer before he leaves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when Captain America calls the Captain America uh, calls the hammer, that was cool. Yeah, that was a huge moment in that, that battle. Was huge. Yeah, built up from Age of Ultron when they were trying to move it. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember. Because like no one had like every people have picked it up, but no one has like called it like that. Yeah, called it used it to create lightning, you know, fighting with it. Um, yeah. yeah, that was, that was so epic. I remember. And when we're talking about like ha- having 
seen it in the theaters. Wait, Kay, you watched this in theaters. Yeah, I did. But I, I remember I saw it on like a Sunday afternoon and so kind of like, like a quieter night, a quieter. Okay. Yeah. Quieter screening. And that was after watching it in the uh, uh, in the theater. I, that was one of my biggest regrets of like, I should have tried to go see this like opening night. <laughs> I should have tried to go see it like the weekend it opened because that would have been more I would have been more uh free to kind of like express myself during mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, screening mm-hmm. versus I remember like being like oh and like being like the only one mm-hmm. <laughs> and and not really wanting to like make a scene you know because yeah. you, you know if other people aren't like yelling it's kind of rude to be like yeah you know yeah treating it like more like a concert mm-hmm. um yeah so you know maybe I don't know there's there's down the line, maybe times we could do a special screening where it's just like, yell as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we go back uh, to Morag and Vormir with, um, uh, you know, that great music cue of seeing Quill getting the power stone. So great. Um, yeah. So great. And then you have a uh, war machine and Nebula in that scene, which I thought was a fun, interesting pairing. Cause they've both are, you know, have that experience of kind of being augmented and kind of very, a very small moment, but a, a very uh, deep moment of them being like, yeah, I know what, what that's like, you know, uh, to have to be adjusted and augmented. Um, and then I thought you Nebula ha- being uh, uh, not a weak link, but like the crack in their plan by, you know, with her shared wire was a yeah. successful argument for not putting things on the cloud (laughs) (laughs) true true like they were so close it would have been a completely different movie if they if that had not happened right right i mean it is yeah it is a big complication um and you really felt for nebula the un i don't know what the the fate earlier version yeah 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 because you just see how um, blinded she is by her desire to prove her self-worth. Yeah. And just so much in need of that validation. Um, and, you know, and she hasn't, even though she does have Gamora there, you know, she's, she's still in that realm of just like, you're my enemy, you're my competition. So, you know, the, 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 I, it was a great, it was such a great, um, call you know uh difference between you know in that moment when she's like we're not the only ones looking for the for the stone they cut to gamora and nebula fighting on that one planet and then you know gamora helps save nebula from that thing they're fighting and she puts her hand out and then she slaps it away and then at the end of the movie when nebula convinces gamora like you know, eventually we become sisters mm. and we can stop him together. Gamora puts out her hand and Nebula takes her hand. Don't they do that in Guardians too? Don't doesn't like Gamora kick off Nebula's hand at the end? She in Guardians one, she um Gamora puts out her hand to save Nebula because she's like she's like falling. Yeah. Nebula doesn't take it. Right. Yeah. She, she like doesn't take it out. She right? drops like, out yeah. and she lands on the. That's yeah. dope. I love that. They then paid homage to that. Moment. Yeah. And it you know, me. that relationship between Nebula and Gamora, even though it, it's, it's one of those things of just like, it'd be awesome if it was all in one movie and you're just like, it's all about them, but it was, it's also- I would love that too. Just cause I personally have had a very nebulous relationship with my sister growing up. And now we're like so tight. Oh, okay. Um, we're inc- incredibly close, but like that's, it wasn't ever a rivalry because we weren't competing with each other, but like, I would have loved to have seen like that relationship, like them growing up. Right. Yeah. Like, what yeah. That must've been like, I mean, we, we oh, hear about it. That would be an interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the, the thing is, it's like, it, it's almost like, you would want that, but at the same time, ha- getting to see like pieces and the evolution of that re- relationship in all the different movies. I think that I guess, I guess that's the, that's the kind of like pro and con of having a, 
all these movies, like you, you, these characters and their relationship is so it changes and, and the arc of it is so spread out that if you don't watch all the different movies, you won't get the full view of it. You do lose it. Yeah. You do yeah. lose the importance of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, whereas if they had their own movie and it was all in one place, you could like def- be, definitely be able to appreciate everything because it's all there. Um, yeah. But, you know, maybe down the line, there's a Gamora Nebula property that, you know, it's a different new phase of, of that relationship where we can see it all all together and they can put it, they can splice in all the scenes from all the other movies. It's like, this is where we think we came from. Um, and then, uh, you know, you have, uh, the Jersey scene where they go back to, uh, the, the, uh, the military base and Tony runs into his father having that great, great scene where he's a father talking to his father, who's about to be a father to Tony. I mean, talk about a mind. Like, and then like, doesn't he give him the dad, his dad, the advice that like his dad gives him? I think so. Yeah. So yeah. then like, and like, that's so great too, because then it's that whole thing of like, you already have the answers. Well, I'm going to be Frida for a second. I'm going to put my Frida hat. Like <laughs> you already know the answers. Cause that's essentially like Tony gave his dad the advice that his dad gives to him. So Tony gives himself his own, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's very circular, like mm-hmm. chicken or egg. What came first? Mm-hmm. Who actually gave the advice? Yeah. Um, and then, and then you have, uh, uh, Steve getting to see Peggy, you know, uh, in oh, and that office scene. So, you know, kind of setting up like them getting to have these emotional moments while, you know, you know also getting okay, I just realized Tesseract. that that scene was really important to remind people why he doesn't come back. Right. Right. Why he makes that choice in the end to to not yeah. return to the present. Then, oh my God. And then he sees the photo of him on the desk and was like, oh, she liked me this whole time. Yeah, she still she still remembers do me. anything about it. And then he goes, <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Yeah, I thought they did a really great job subtly paying that off. Oh, man, I wish they had like given me a little bit more just so I could have mm. cried more of my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cry more. Yeah. Um, and well, speaking of crying, you know, kind of the final scene in this whole time high section is Hawkeye and Black Widow fighting to sacrifice themselves to jump over the cliff for the Soul Stone. One of the best scenes, I think, in the MCU because, you know, they're fighting each other. And then, and, you know, when, when you have all these fight scenes throughout all of these movies, obviously you're going to be like, Bad guy versus good guy. Bad guy versus a good guy. That's going to happen. But the ways that they make up, the reasons they make up to allow the characters to fight each other, it makes it so rich. And I feel like this was, was one of those. It's like the um, um, Avengers 2. Yeah, Ultron. Uh-huh. It's like it was a version of that. In yeah. terms of like, we get to see what it's like if one, if they're, you know, battling against each other, but. Two, oh, you mean civil war? Mm, what's the one it's where it's um, uh, civil. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, civil they're war. at the yeah, airport yeah, 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 and they're yeah. on teams. Yeah. Because like they call that Adventures 2.5 or something, right? Yes, 2.5. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was great to see then like the opposite of that, which is like that was the whole team and this was like one on one plus you know we we know that they they're besties yeah she's an auntie to his kids mm-hmm. um i don't know and the fact that he was just like you know what i've done i've been killing people this whole time just let I mean, me you do can't this. go you can't go you have three whole kids you can't true, go true true and well then uh-uh. she was just like you know and it was interesting so again i was listening to the commentary she they did make the distinction that yes, she's giving Hawkeye the chance to like return to his family, but she is also fighting for her family, her family being the Avengers and allowing for all of the Avengers who, you know, got dusted to come back. It's her 
sacrificing herself to save them. That's also driving her. Um, so I thought that was a kind See, of, and this is why I'm like, okay, well, hold on. Cause this goes back to my sacrifice conversation with Thanos being mm-hmm, like, do you mm-hmm. really sacrifice Gamora when he tosses her over? Cause like, is that really love? Yeah. But you know, I guess then that makes me think like, if we go more general, I was going to get real woo woo. Like, I guess the universe does not know like the difference, hmm. right? Like as long as it's a sacrifice in function, all it's versus a sacrifice in versus like like widow dies and like while yes it helps bring back the the um the like world piece like they don't personally gain i guess they do gain personal gain for me i interpret it as whoever makes the sacrifice to them to them it's a loss it's a cost. There's something's going to they're paying an emotional cost. Mm, 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 mm. So, yes, Thanos, it was a was it a sacrifice for the world? Like, no, but it was a sacrifice for him specifically yeah. because he did love Gamora. Yeah, I guess she then did I wanted something to, to him. more of that relationship to really uh, see that. You wanted you, know? you wanted him to hurt more, honestly, a little bit. Yeah. And I think, too, because they talk so much about how he, you know, pitted them against each other and mm. used them. And I would have loved to see that fucked up love. Cause that is fucked up. Like if you love your child, children that you stole your kidnapped child, adopted kidnapped child. Yeah. And like, you know, and just to, you know, it's that, um, what was, you know, when we see Killmonger, we understand his intent as the baddie, right. Like just to see, to understand that a little bit mm. more to hear his like twisted logic behind how he actually felt for them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like how he could do that to his children simultaneously while loving them at the very, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I will say it almost, it, it again, because it's so wrapped up in like all of this action and this huge story, there is that, and that's why I watch these movies so much because I feel like those moments are there. They're just like so fleeting that you're just like, uh, like, yeah, yeah. like you have to kind of watch it a bunch of times to be like, Oh, to and really there's a little it. bit of, like, I would even say at the beginning where they go to kill Thanos and he's finally hurt, you know, like he's, he's used the infinity stones twice. He's very, very weak. That's why it's so easy for them to kind of like hold him down when Nebula, you know, stands up for him or pretty much says like, you know, I, my father's a many things, but he's not a liar. That moment, he finally is just like, perhaps I was too hard on you. And then he, and then Thor kills him. Mm. Like, even then I was just like, Oh man, you, wow. That's what it took, you know, like for him to be hit with infinity stones twice and for Nebula to be like, you know, mm. like, I know who you are. You are, you know, be showing that she does know who he is yeah. and being like the one person to be like in this moment when you're all alone, we're actually, I'm actually someone you're still connected to. Yeah. And then he's, that's when he finally shows her kind of like, you know, consideration and, and a little bit of love. And then he dies. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, and then she just like slowly just like wipes away the blood. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so it's such great performances. And the fact that she's playing two versions of herself. So good. So good. So good. Um, so, yeah. So so that's the the end of the time heist. Then we get into the final battle. You know, they have the Infinity Stones. Hulk snaps the snap. The people come back. Thanos comes through the portal snaps the snap. Oh, snaps. Um, he uses the infinity stones to snap everyone back. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but then Thanos comes to the portal with the help of old nebula. And then he blows up the complex and everyone is buried under the rubble. Um, you have Captain- I was so mad. That was a huge mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, they literally blow Barry the yeah I'm out like, of that oh complex so we're so hard <laughs> <laughs> so much equipment yeah and so much technology so, like, i think it like triggers my like asianness being like that's so much money <laughs> it was so much money it's and so expensive just gone just <laughs> gone 
<laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Tony's got so much money. You know, they're all very rich. Um, yeah, well, yes, it's going to take a lot to mm-hmm. build it back up again. Um, but then you go into this final battle, you know, you got Thor, you have Captain America, you have Iron Man versus Thanos trying to take them on as everybody else is scrambling to get back on their feet. Um, and, you know, Captain becomes worthy and he uses the hammer, um, but still Thanos is too much. And then we have the epic portal scene where you hear Sam. Did you notice the first line from when the before the portal opens? Mm-mm. He says, Remind me, he says on your left. Yes. From the movie, I remember. Yeah. Yes, from the yes. movie, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Because you hear his line before you see everyone. Right. And it's yes. Captain. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So, I, uh, you know, and you've seen the reactions like from that moment, you're just like they're back. He's doing a call back to when he first met Cap um, and then the portal start opening. You see, of course, Black Panther, T'Challa come through first that like just like a nod of just like I'm here for you and then you have all those Avengers I still cry when I see it today I cry when I watch the reaction videos because I'm just like I wanted to be that person to being like yes oh my god they're all back and they're all together um yeah and you just see all of them come through um the portals um were, who were you most excited to see again or were like what moment for you are you were just like oh 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 like i think it was just a great build up just to mm-hmm. see everyone come and like everyone got their moment um i think i said this in the uh watch along seeing um valkyrie come yeah that was really like, cool added a lo- lovely level of like mysticism and fantasy to it that you don't generally, I feel like associate with Marvel. Cause it's more like, I don't know, like superhero comic Um, yeah. I don't know. It was just really satisfying. I love, uh, what's his name? The Asian character from Dr. Uh, Wong. Strange Wong have his like moment too. And he's like, wait, you wanted more people to come? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was a great team up moment. And everybody was on the same page and was here like, like everyone had grown to get to this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And And it was just really satisfying to see that payoff. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, the way it was put together with all the different cuts and like the music and, you know, I think seeing at the, the, no, 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 uh, pepper in her iron woman yeah it was tight that was fucking tight because you had ne- up until then had never seen her yeah that was action that that was, was really i remember cool. that was super surprising i was just yeah, like oh that was that on the yeah. face open jar oh shit it's pepper ah, that was you tight. know yeah 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 um yeah and uh you know you get every all these different pieces coming together um and you realize oh shoot they have they have a lot of great epic you know help um and then you know a uh, captain a uh, cap he he grabs the the hammer Lean and they away. also mentioned this yeah <laughs> they mentioned uh, this on the commentary how like you know uh they had decided that he, the his avengers assemble line which you know is kind of a huge it's like a it's a well-known line in the comics like avengers assemble um he they they meant they want they thought it had more like uh, more punch of him saying it kind of more like under his breath versus kind of the yelling it. But because he catches the hammer right before in the theater, it was hard for people to hear it because they were, they would yell again when he had got the hammer. So he'd That's like catch what? a camera. We were like, woo. And they'd be like assemble. And they'd be like, Oh, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. So like this epic moment, they're just oh, like, they were funny. already screaming and yeah. you couldn't really hear him say it but uh, that's hold a for re- hold yeah. for applause <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> you don't know to hold oh, for applause when you're uh filming an epic do you know battle. in cap one in the first movie k i can't remember like I've, i'm drawing a blank i know because he, what he's like does he ever get to lead as cap 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the uh, the whole Howling Commandos where they go after Hydra and it's like my, that montage. Yes, but like, was it really like, was he truly like leading, leading, or like, did he have to like cajole the people to do it? Um, I can't remember. All like, this to say, like, I was like, I wonder if this was also his final character arc of like, not just like Steve when he was skinny, but like him becoming like first, first becoming Captain America. And he's like, not really the captain of, um, of anything. <laughs> right. And now <laughs> this is like, you know, he's a captain of like, like you know, of. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, he's a whole team of people. He's more like Captain Avenger, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's kind of become like on all the missions. He's definitely like the leader. You know, he's always been the leader on all of his missions Mm -hmm. up through like until like Winter Soldier. He's always kind of been given the missions, you know, been given, you know, what his mission is, where he's supposed to go is like that's what that felt like was that payoff of him truly taking leadership and ownership and like commanding something yeah. from the top versus being like a foot soldier. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Now he, he, in this war, he's not just the soldier following the the rules yeah. and following the missions. He's making the missions Yeah, and pretty much being the one of like, this is the fight. This yeah. is the war. Yeah. Um. Yeah, totally. Which, you know, is a great, it is, a great payoff to his arc because he was always the one he joined. He was, he joined to fight Nazis and, you know, be part of the cause. And now he's the one that's like saying that this is what the cause mm-hmm, is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then you have just like them go at it, you know, such a, a bunch of epic, you know, battles. You have, a uh, you know, Peter gets a hug from Tony. Finally, oh, man. Uh, Quill reunites with Gamora. Uh, you have Wasp pa- calling Cap Cap, <laughs> which was funny because she was making fun of him uh, so much uh, in the previous movie. And then um, for me, one of the the or uh, an epic, awesome moment is Wanda facing off against Thanos. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Because uh, remember, the last thing she saw was Didn't Thanos kill, kill Vision. Mm-hmm. And so like she, brutally. yeah. After and so she, she had killed him. yeah. So she has all of that emotion, all of that grief, and she is bringing it to Thanos. And again, I was listening to the commentary. The directors and writers were saying, you know what? She's actually the biggest threat to Thanos of all the people on that battlefield. Oh. And because of all the emotions that she's going through, they are actually infusing her with even more power, uh, which what which allows her to be such a threat to him to the point where he has to, you know, uh, order a blitz on the battlefield and have the ships just yes, yes. shoot remember, everything. What's his name? E, his bad his his number two. Oh yeah, uh, a great name. Not Ebony Ma. Ebony Ma was Ma. The yeah, one. Ebony. Yeah, Ma. yeah, Ebony Ma goes. Ma goes like honor something along the lines of like honor like it's also our men or something and yeah he, what about our troops i think yes, that was one yes, of the yes. other ones but okay. yeah the, they say like what about our troops and he's just like just do it so he's sacri- having to again have to sacrifice yeah so he's not you know he's he's actually threatened um and then you have uh captain marvel showing up taking out his spaceship and actually i thought it was that's actually one of those moments where you see Thanos worried. <laughs> He's actually like, oh, my spaceship. <laughs> Which, you know, I, I always find it funny because it's just like this big guy being like, oh, my spaceship. It's the equivalent of like a man getting his car keyed by yeah. a chick, like his muscle <laughs> car. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, like having an ex going at his car yeah. with a baseball bat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 then another great uh, team up moment. Now, this this moment is highly contested on the Internet, I will say, because people are just like this. You know, it seemed they they didn't feel it was organic and they just thought it was like fan service. But I would argue this whole freaking movie is fan service. It was giving fans what they want. Yeah. So the moment where I call it the Lady Avengers moment where where. Um, Peter Parker is just like, um, you know, how are you going to get through there? And then you have Wanda land and she's just like, don't worry. And 
den- deny Gora as a Koye. Oh, it's just like the, 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 she like, has help. The ladies get information scene. Yes. They thought it was too fan service. Yes. But I say, screw that. I what loved that, that moment. What does that even mean? This is like, I don't even know what that means. Like they yeah. shouldn't have done it. It was too like arm muscled. It would, they, they just, people just thought it was like too, like not organic and too like, uh, you know, they're like, ah, oh, it's too fan service. It's too, too forced. And I was like, hell no, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. How is it and I remember forced? in so the theater silly. when that moment happened, I grabbed, I grabbed Jacob's arm and I was just like, oh my God. Like, no, I, I like, thought yes. the same thing too. It was like so great because none of the women at this point have had their own movie. Right. Right. Not yet. Well, and Captain Marvel. You have, yeah, Ca- Captain Mar- Marvel. Marvel. Is it Marvel or Marvel? How it's do Marvel. People- it's Marvel. Marvel. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, it wasn't forced at all. Everyone yeah. got their like moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love that shot. It is so cool. They you knew have that shot. Yeah. You have like Captain Marvel. You have Wanda, Okoye, Shuri, Wasp, uh, uh, Pepper Potts, you know, Tessa and the, uh, Valkyrie in the background, uh, the Nebula Gamora. And the fact, that, and it's not just that like shot, like go after Thanos together and like totally. Because that's what we do. That's what women do. Yeah. You know what I mean? They would have been like, we're going to take this asshole down together. Yeah. Yeah. And and, uh, so I would just say for any, whoever listens to this podcast, (laughs) if you're a person who was just like, uh, that moment, I say, boo you. (laughs) I love that moment. I am one of those people that if they had not put that moment in, I think it would have been not, I would have not enjoyed this movie as much because I thoroughly enjoyed that moment. Uh, so that's my rant about the Lady Avengers moment. Uh, and, you know, and then and like, it, they have the whole Captain America butt shot. Like <laughs> it would do Captain America butts. <laughs> yeah. Total fan service. Like that was the ladies coming together with fan service. Like y'all don't know what fan service is. I think from for me, fan service particularly is like from comics. My experience with it is when like mm-hmm. it's with comics and they like give you like all the sexy, you know, it's the thing when like the guys take off their shirt and like, it's oh, like, a, like gratuitous. Know? Yeah. Like, but they, they're doing it for the fans. I'm like, like that, but that to me was fan service. Right. Cause it's like, you know, he's hot. Everyone knows, you know, everyone loves Chris Evans <laughs> and how hot he is. Right. Like that to me is fan service. This is like, I don't know. I don't know. It was well, not forced. No, no. I loved it. It was great. Yeah. That's one of my favorite uh, moments in the MCU ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you it was earned. Yes, I would say definitely. Definitely. I mean, you have all of these awesome characters coming together. Why not spotlight a moment where all the female characters come together? Because They like, would have They would have been like, hey, my hair gets tangled up in the wind. What are you doing to brush the knots out of your hair? <laughs> like, do you have a tampon? Like, yes, exactly. You know, like I get sore what do you do to roll out your muscle? Like, do these shoes work for you? Are they comfortable? <laughs> you know, like they would have shared tips. I don't, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, it's canon that lady Avengers help a lady support lady. hundred percent. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, and then we go into the final moments of the battle and, you know, uh, everyone trying to get Thanos, uh, away from the infinity gauntlet you even have that moment where Captain Marvel comes up against him and like gives him a head. She, he tries to headbutt her and then he, that fails. Um, but then it's finally uh, Tony who gets the stones, gives it another snap with that epic final line, which he started the movie at um, the franchise with. I am Iron Man. And again, I was listening to the commentary. That was the last shot that they that they uh, shot for the movie. It was part of reshoots. So it actually wasn't part of the original script. And it was so it wasn't until they were in reshoots and they were already editing that they decided to add that line. And when they and and this was like in January of 2019. So like the movie came out in April. They they shot that in January of that same year. 
And funnily enough, the studio that they shot that in was right next to the studio where uh, Robert Downey Jr. had done had done his original screen test for Iron Man. So it was this huge full circle moment where they made this very last shot for this movie where yeah. he dies and, you know, bringing what this conclusion fucking, together. It must have been a trip for him. Yeah, totally. To, to be that. like. To, yeah, I wonder if he told them or they were like going through it in the reshoot. Like, I wonder how that idea came about. For I believe reshoot. it was an editor that suggested it. <sighs> Got to get a good editor. I mean, the collaboration and and one of the other things they mentioned a lot in the commentary was just like the the composer and all of the music that he wrote for this. Apparently, he's never received like an Academy Award. <gasps> Yeah, his name is Alan Silvestri, and I feel like he should at some point the move, the get music some flowers. Was great. Yeah, yeah, the music was great because even just hearing that music by itself, it makes you feel like no, you, you can already fucking know. take on the world. Yep, you know yep, 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 that you're yep, assembling yep. with superheroes. Um, and then you have the death of Tony Stark. You have Peter saying his goodbye. You have Pepper saying his goodbye. Oh, that was hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember even in my theater, which was on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> when the light went out on his suit, there was a gasp of like, <gasps> you know. Uh, yeah. I think Pepper uh, saying bye to him was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Doing her really hard. Doing her Gwyneth acting as she does. Yeah. Um. And then that great huge scene, which Cause wait, really quick, because she because that was what she was trying to avoid this whole time. Yeah. I mean, Do she even know? says in the beginning, like the bi- biggest failure of her life is like trying was trying to get him to stop yeah. being Iron Man. Yeah. And now that he can finally stop because he's dying, he can. And that's the other line that she references. She says, now you can finally you can rest. rest. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So R.I.P. Iron Man. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it finishes off with that funeral scene where you see everyone oh, of God. the MCU, just the legacy Line. of the movies. Yeah. <laughs> what were you talking What? No, just the I love you 3000. Oh, yeah. I did not see that coming. And it just gobsmacked me. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. Yeah. The, the legacy, just how far he had, uh, how much he had affected people. And mm-hmm. also in such a um, huge contrast to how he was affecting people in the first movie with his, right. you know, war missiles. Yep. And, I don't know. Warheads. His weapons. Yeah. 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 How he had, you know, his like pretty much someone who was, who had been so concerned with like, his legacy, you know, here's his legacy and what he's left behind. Mm-hmm. It's not just a bunch of weapons mm-hmm. for the military that could go be, you know, used by anyone in various hands. He's actually left a legacy of people yeah, who are willing to, you know, uphold what he stood for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you just have the, the final wrap up moments of, um, Thor kind of giving the throne to Valkyrie, um, which, you know, there's a movie coming out called Love, Thor, Love and Thunder, which I'm assuming is going to be. I love that. That's the that sounds like, um you know, there's like books with like the long haired man. What's his name? Fabio. Uh huh. Oh, the, like, like a romance the novel. Yeah. You know, the trashy romance. That's what it sounds like. I thought it was I a mean, meme when I first saw that because it's a great <laughs> 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 I mean, who knows? It, it's being directed by Taika Waititi. <gasps> so it could it could be so many things. Um, so it's very exciting to know that that's kind of where the, the jumping point off is going to be uh, with King the Rock Band. <laughs> <laughs> with the with Guardians, the Guardians of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have that great scene of him and, you know, Chris Pratt, uh, yeah. Quill kind of being like, Quills oh. on tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> and then not uh, Mandarin playing. Uh, what's her name? Uh, not Mandarin. Uh, 
uh, Mantis playing the knives. Yeah. Even though they're not instruments, she's yeah. found out a way to play them. Oh my God. I love it. Um, thunder. And, and then you have Cap going back in time to drop off the infinity stones oh, but man. then he shows up at the on the bench by the by the lake and he gives the shield to sam which is going to be the jumping wow, off so point that means he went back in time like 40 years yeah whatever the number is to get to to get to you know his 80 year old self or whatever yeah age. well yeah the idea is like he went back to peggy and then yes. just aged natural naturally but the fact that he gives the the shield to sam and sam and he's like you know uh try it on how does it feel and sam says like it belongs to somebody else cap says well it doesn't that's going to be the jumping off point of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the television series that came out earlier this year. Um, and the final shot is uh, Steve finally getting his dance with Peggy um, and being able to live that life that he's, you know, when he was talking about Tony, uh, so that Tony told him to get a little piece of. Um, and then when you did have, he say that? When did at he the say very that? end, he's like, he was like, I decided to get some of that life. No, no. That- when does Tony say that? When when had he said said that? Um, I think, I think it was at the end of. I want to say at the end of Avengers. Yeah, there was the something. About, yeah, something about mm-hmm. like when they're walking out. He was just like. He was like, you know, uh, maybe I'll get a little cabin up in the woods. You know have maybe a kid or something you know like Mm, mm, mm. and he's like where are you gonna go and and steve was like well actually i'll probably stay here because this feels most like home because he's always been on military bases i think it was around one of those conversations like after at the end of a movie um yeah yeah and so he did he went back had a life with peggy um and then uh the we have the end of Endgame and the Infinity Saga. So, uh, yeah. Any other thoughts about Endgame? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it was it was worth the hype. Yeah, it was worth the hype. It was worth the hype. Cool, cool. It was really well, worth the hype. All right. Yes, we have proven it was worth the hype. It was just like, it was a great... It was a great journey. They did not um, fail to deliver, Um, you know, and it's interesting. I don't. So with like the Marvel movies, I don't think they're pretending to be anything. They're not. I think they know exactly what they're doing. And I think it's an amazing theme park. Yeah. Also, (laughs) I I think we mentioned this. I would love to see a Martin Scorsese Marvel movie. Wow. No wonder what that would look like. You know, like just because it's it's fucking cool. Like, I, I don't know. I just, yeah. Well, it's a great popcorn movie and it's not just like popcorn. You know, yeah. there's a lot of like gummy bears and M&Ms in the bottom of the popcorn box. Right. Yeah. And so I really appreciate what they're doing and they do a great job doing it. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of the Marvel portion of the podcast for today. Kind of an, a bit of a longer portion because we're talking about Endgame. But now we're going to transition into stretch, stretch and, and share. share. Um, you first, K. Okay, what's the stretch? Mm, let's. It's more like a rub. Mm-hmm. More like a squeeze. Uh, maybe your forearms. Just give them a little tender love. Yeah, sure. Um, so my share is um, well, one kind of one half share. Hawkeye recently dropped last week. Um, very fun. And looking forward to your thoughts on that. Do you binge um, these, by the way, the, the shows? How like how quickly do you get through them? I watch them when they drop. So the uh, Hawkeye, the, the MCU shows, they were released once a week. They don't mm, release all of the oh, episodes I see, at once. I see. Okay. Okay. So you tune in. Every- I tune in when they, after they, you know, when they are premiered and dropped. Um, I, in the Question, beginning, would you, would, would you ever wait and just, for all of it to be out and just binge. 
You know, I, I don't think so because my social media is so attuned to Marvel. I would get I spoiled. Okay. So you're just like, I got to just do it now. Yeah. So otherwise I'll get like the headline. Like, did they really kill so-and-so on mm. last night's hot fly? I'm just like, well, now I <laughs> know someone mm-hmm. almost dies or supposedly dies. Got it. Got it, um, got it. Yeah. Uh, the other main share is that I watched um, the Annie live on NBC. Um, they did a, they did a, you know how they do like live musicals uh, for TV nowadays. They've done like, they've done the whiz. They did, An- they did, uh, uh, what else? They did Peter Pan. They did rent. They did. I was not aware Reese. of this. No, no. Yeah. Well, um, they've started doing cable, those again. Like regular TV though. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. So this is like a, remote control clicky channel yeah yeah okay. well nbc <laughs> one of the first television oh yes i know ever. that but like as far as the program goes wow yeah, it's yeah. like i'm from the 50s as far as the program <laughs> goes do i use my remote control <laughs> so it is it was released on peacock the next okay. day um but uh so annie live I and like Annie live, meaning Annie, the musical, Annie, the, the sun musical. will come out tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Was live. Okay. yes. So, so that show, um, it, it was good. It was solid. Um, I didn't notice though. Nicole Scherzinger, she plays like Annie? this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little old Randy, a little, just a little, just a little oh, old Randy. Um, no, she plays uh, Daddy Warbucks' assistant, the one that he okay. kind of falls in love with at the end. Yeah, her makeup. I'm gonna. I'll send you a picture. Her, she, her face looks so contoured, and it made me, made me. Hey, look at you! I, I know. I, I, when I was looking at her face, I was just like, I know. I, I want. I, I was like, I know there are so many things going on with her face right now, <laughs> and I, I was trying, you know. And I just, it just made me think like, I don't think I would have realized that before, oh. you know, I probably would have like watched it and been like, oh, Nicole Schingzer, her face is gorgeous and all, you know, just naturally looks like that. But like now I, when I was looking at her face, I was just like, there's probably a lot going on there with the contouring yeah. of her okay. face. I just pulled up an image. So this was also, um, theater right so like they're performing in a theater and like i'm guessing it's live on stage it's a a sizable screen a stage that they're on yeah 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 there's a live audience there so especially for theater it is and this is where like on tv it's gonna look like a lot because she's doing it for live and so then like you know it's the whole like you got to project for the people in the back like they're putting more so on because again there's people in the back that need to be able to see her face and you have to remember there's stage lights so i'm curious to know how they lit this because lighting for theater i'm sure has to be different than lighting for film and tv but for theater with the the lights it's gonna wash you out Mm. right so you're gonna it's gonna be a lot darker than you're used to um and that's that's the sense i get watch looking at this image as they really but they you are right they um contoured her face Um, yeah you can see the contour you can see the cheekbones how they like shaped her face and very defined lines there yep and And again if she was like a youthful girl they probably would have rounded out her cheeks to make her look more like uh young and like yeah. um pollyanna ish for a lack of better words yeah no okay you are absolutely right they contoured her face very beautifully yeah so i uh that was, that's that's my share i i noticed that her face was Your super i am getting better <laughs> yeah and yeah. i was able to to see it to see and that's it the thing like we think recognize it's just it. like oh she just has like makeup on and she just looks that way but like her makeup Yes, she's a beautiful woman, uh, but they're accentuating certain yeah. features and, and I guess for what, her and for her character. Yes, yes. And to me, what kind of was the reason why it was so memorable was just like, I feel like I, I'm i noticing that it has a specific effect that they're trying to uh, create um, versus before when I've been like, oh, they did her makeup like that versus, and, and now I was just like, oh, I... I can see 
just the fact that I was able to notice it yeah. and like kind of, yeah, that's, so that's my share. I think that's great. I noticed contouring. Yay. Um, now I'm like, when you said he falls in love with the sister, I was like, did he? I thought he fell in love with Annie, like not yeah. in a sexual way, but yeah, like, I mean, yeah, he does fall in love with Annie. There's different versions of it. Oh, of I the, know that. Of, well, like there's the movie versions, the TV versions. And like sometimes I've seen the TV version. Okay. Sometimes that's yeah, sometimes that's they the only one I know or the movie version, whatever the famous one is with the, with the girl red hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, I think they always they definitely kind of like allude to the fact that they're kind of a romantic. There's a romantic yeah, love there. Not that in 2021, like there's like a weird power dynamic thing coming in between with the daddy Warbuck falling in love. I with mean, the yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What about your share? My share. This is very in line with makeup. Um, I went to go see my facialist and I was concerned about some lines I was seeing. And so my facialist hooked it up and gave me a little service and she, she does a stone massage thing. And uh-huh. I don't know what it is uh, until recently. So I thought with the stone massage thing, she does, you know, those like round t- uh, massage stones you see at like uh, spa and uh-huh. massage places. They're kind of flat, so, like flat, but they're like an actual stone, right? Like they have girth to it. Right. And they're soft, like they're rounded. Right. And I was like, in my head, it was those stones. And I was like, what is she doing? And it's, it, and, you, and sh- the way she describes it, she like scrubs your face with these stones. Uh-huh. And I was like, how the hell is she getting these like round stones and rubbing them on your face. I was, is she like rolling them? She pulls, she pulls it out of her. Like, um, like it's like, a. I don't know if it's a fridge. It's not a fridge. It must be like a UV cleaner thing that like estheticians have. She pulls it out and it's like, it's like a, it's like this big. Right. But it's like flat. It's like an arrowhead. It's like oh. black and like, you know, it's like skinny, but there's like, you know, it's like, a, a, not it's not flat like I'm just it's like an arrowhead if it was round right so then okay. like there's like girth in the middle but it flattens out and it's like blades right <laughs> and there's like gold embossed in it and it looks like it, it's not obsidian but it's some kind of like not cheap black stone like it's not a pebble right and it's like gold <laughs> embossed and she pull. I was like oh um and then she proceeds to scrape the area I mentioned and she's like there's gonna be bruising it's okay it's gonna go away and I did have bruising yesterday it looked like um like inflammation you know you when you get like rosea or whatever uh-huh. it looked like rosea and she scraped my face with the stone and but my face looks great <laughs> and she was going because it was like a section she was like I'm going slower and at I'm going half speed and half power and and she and I was like, oh, I would hate to see what full power and full speed looks like. This is like very painful. Wow. Yeah. It was quite but an it experience. Works. It works. I her name's Jen, guys. She's Jin Lee, skincare in K-Town. Go mm. see her. I love her. Um, my friend went and was like, man, I wish I had gone to see see her sooner. It is not a pleasant experience as far <laughs> as like pain goes, but you do see results. Okay. Yeah. I would have taken photos. Like I used to have, um, spider veins. I'm not wearing makeup and you know, we're on computer. I used to have spider veins here. Right. Uh-huh. And they're, they're pretty much gone now. Huh. Um, and okay. I would have taken photos had I known. And like her whole thing is like, everything's connected with your lymph nodes. It's about creating more circulation. If you have breakouts, it's just because your pores are clogged and we need to extract all the dirt and oil buildup. Um, so that you can clean your face. And she, she has her own, um, her story. I told, I asked her how she got into the stone scraping and she has a very, like her story with it. Like she's had her own battles with skincare with skin oh. and, and she, she overcame it with the stone blade massage. <laughs> wow. So she's like, not only am I, I use the stones on people. I use it on myself. Yeah. It's kind of like her infinity stones. What? Oh, yay. We did. 
Read it. Um, cool, cool, cool. Well, that's the stretch and share for today. Yay. Let's go ahead and transition into the makeup portion. Yes, yes, yes. We are doing organizing makeup, mm-hmm. which, um, oh, uh, but just real quickly, my makeup today is a yes. bold lip. I attempted to do a three color purpley type eyeshadow. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, Quincy mentioned that kind of using the darker kind to define the shape might help more in the future, but uh, that's what was happening today. It's great. The colors look great. Um, they really suit, like, they're not uh, fighting each other. Mm-hmm, I think you, mm-hmm. you showed me the colors. Um, oh, for our YouTube viewers, please show the colors you picked. Okay. I think yes. it's a very good color. I the second row here, I didn't use this one. I used the pink. You these two the and then the, the light purple. Yeah, I think that uh, great color choice. Um, great instinct. It's not fighting with your lip color. Your lip application is always super stellar, by the way. I'm getting it's always a- very precise and very like very lovely. Oh, good, good. I'm trying to be more calm with it. Like before I'd be like, get it in the line. But now today I did, I did it a little bit more just like. Um, no, it looks great. A little more, a little, just a little lighter. And then I just used like my lips to kind of like move it around mm-hmm, instead of doing mm-hmm. it. There you go. Look at you, yeah. Kate. You're like doing it your way. Woo, making my own way. Do yeah. I take and get my own techniques? Yeah. Are, um, you do, are you wearing any foundation? I am. I'm also wearing foundation. Looks great. And a little bit of blush. Yeah. A little bit of blush. Good so, work. Yeah. It looks great. I'm glad you're playing around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I and think- again, when we hopped on, uh, friends of our podcast listeners, um, again, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. But today we're talking about organizing makeup, mm-hmm. which I need help with because I am currently using gallon bags. Oh no, okay. I have a makeup bag I've pulled aside for and, you for uh, you to use, and, and a like a plastic tub. Mm, I... So how do you the how do you organize your makeup? Great. I feel like I feel like whenever I think of makeup, people's like setup, I just think of like counters covered with different items. I don't think you need to do that. Um, I personally don't. I think at one point it's, it's changed whatever works for you. Um, if you don't need all that makeup out all the time, like, you know, you're not uh, um, a makeup artist seeing clients every, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think you need to do that. I used to have my makeup out. Like you can get like, you can use like re upcycle, like a cute cup or like um, if you see a cute mug, you can upcycle those for your brushes. Uh huh. Um, I personally don't because I have a cat and a dog and like my cat gets into everything and I don't want her like brushing up against my brushes. Um, so I have them, I have upcycled like a bandaid, um, a bandaid case. It looks like a bandaid. And like, I use that to store my brushes or I'll use like pencil bags. Pencil bags are great. Like okay. even the Asian, like at Daiso, you can get them for a dollar. Um, I have a travel size makeup kit that kind of has like the five brushes I need. So I, for my like daily use, I have it in that. Um, as far <laughs> as makeup goes, I have like a, um, it's essentially, um, what is it? It's made, um, it's, um, it's just a zip up bag that I like toss in. I've also gone through where it's just in a drawer and like everything's kind of laid out. Um, I've also gone through, what else have I done? I've done like those big makeup box, box uh, bags where you have to like paw through, but I hate pawing through. Yeah. I guess what, what, what's a good way to help to, you know, separate things. So they stay kind of like with their similar stuff. But also make sure your the things that you use most often are like accessible. Is it like a, is it like a case or? So I do. Um, I think it, again, really depends on what you do. I think for like so, all like the stuff I've accumulated for drag is completely separated. Mm. And so then the one zip, the one bag I have, and I have I pulled a bag. I don't know if you heard me, but I had pulled a bag for you to use since I have extra. Um, it's see-through, it has a zipper, um, you'll be able to see it. Um, but I generally keep what I use. Also, I'm very light. Like 
I don't do a heavy eye very often and I kind of have my basic go-to. So I just have that in one bag and then the brushes that I use and then uh-huh. like, that's all, that's it. And then so, everything extra is away. So like, what are, what, what are in those things that you Great. Uh, get go-to regularly? Great. Well, like what, what's in the brush thing and what's in the bag. Great. And then I think also just set sidebar. I'm like, again, I do the same makeup every day. I'm not mm-hmm. one of those girls who women who like have like, who, who do a different colored lip with a different kind of uh, blush with like different eyes. Um, so that's why mine is very like, this is same. it. Yeah. Um, uh, I have in my bag, a, a primer, my concealer, my BB cream, my, um, eyeshadow color to fill in my brows, my eye pri- shadow primer and my eyeshadow. And I have the two little, two little cases. One of them is elf. Like I have the shimmery one. I don't uh-huh. have to put that in there. And then I have my like everyday one that I, I don't always use uh, eyeliner, a pencil eyeliner, a liquid eyeliner and mascara and then blush and then finishing powder. Okay. And so those are just the products and all the brushes for that are in the brush container. That's what I like to, uh, so then in my travel case, it has a foundation brush, two eyeshadow brushes. It's a, sorry, it's a fluffy blush brush, a foundation brush, um, a flat eyeshadow brush that I double dip to use for primer and concealer. Okay. Um, and then like a, a, the round fluffy brush that's like for to, to buffer. And then I have another, the, the, the brush that's round, but like dense to like, really like apply the corners uh, of the eye. And then the flat brush I could technically use also to apply to my eyeshadow. Okay. Okay. So brushes and then products yeah. kind of in the two spaces. Yeah. If I had a bigger bag, I'd the mascara, uh, the eyelash curler and the eye, uh, eyebrow brush also goes into the product bag just cause oh, okay. they're just too loose items mm-hmm. that I'm like, let me just toss in there. Okay. And, and how would you say like, like, how did you end up with that type of system? Uh, just cause I don't, again, like I had, I think at one point, like everything in one bag and I just don't like to claw. And then when I had my tools and my products in one bag, again, it was like, pawing through it. And I just didn't want to paw through things anymore. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, what's the easiest way to just like keep track of everything. Yeah. And that's what you ended up with yeah. in terms of your, your skincare stuff. Is that in a different section, skincare, a different place? Skincare. Great question. Skincare. Um, so my face wash and stuff, anything that's like water, soap, bathroom stuff is in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um, my like machine thing I have for like skincare is in the bathroom. My sheet masks are in the fridge because I guess that's what's that's good for you. Keeping it cold is good for your skin when you put it on. Um, and then my like any cream stuff is with my makeup. Mm. So the my makeup stuff is in a bag in those bags in a drawer. And then my skincare stuff, just the way my vanity is set up is on top of the vanity. Okay. And so do you have a vanity that's just for makeup? Like, is it also your desk? It's just for makeup. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like it particularly. I'd like to get a new one cause it's a little bit short. Like mm-hmm. I feel like my, my stool might be too tall, but, it, but I feel like I have to hunch and I'd like something where I can just, um, sit up straight, sit up straight. Yeah. And it has a mirror. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool, cool, yeah, cool. but sometimes the bathroom is the bathroom works. Um, I think if my bathroom had more space, um, and like cabinet, ca- I would just have everything in there. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, that's what bathroom. I did in college. Like everything was, or you know, in college because we had shared bathrooms, like everything was in a bag, and then I do my makeup in the bathroom um, or the mirror behind the door that came in, in every college dorm room. Right. Say. Right. Yeah. I, I, my bathroom does not have that much space in it, but it doesn't even have any cabinets it just mm-hmm. has like the, the cabinet drawer underneath the sink mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. So trying to find, well, and also 
I'm also in a one bedroom, one bath that's currently being used as two offices because we're mm. still working from home. Um, so trying to find a setup that's interesting, that that works um, is kind of for me, I think the next step. Yeah. I, I also will say um, I see the the sorry, really quick, the the sliding glass doors behind you. Like mm-hmm. that's also an option if you had like a skinny console table next to, you know, like. I've done it. I, you can do it sitting down, standing up, like, but I've also in a pinch, like when I go over to a girlfriend's house, I'll just sit on the floor and like do my makeup in that mirror too. Yeah. I, this is a little off topic, but when you're doing your makeup and you don't have your glasses on, how do you see? Cause I feel like, I feel like I've been trying to do stuff with my glasses off. And when it, when I, it's it's hard for me to see what I'm doing because my yeah. vision is bad. Oh, I, do you? Oh, I think you've mentioned before you would put your contacts in and just take them off after yeah, you're done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Especially because I think you and I both like big glasses and they just mm-hmm. like get in the way. Like I can do some stuff that like things that don't require like accuracy per se. Like you know, doing the foundation, primer, yeah, yeah, foundation, the concealer part. Um, but anything with eyes, it's just, you know, I can maybe do my eyeshadow. Well, my vision is very bad, but I could probably do my eyebrows. Um, maybe even my eyeshadow. Um, cause it would, I would just buff out the edges anyways, if they were too, but like anything really close to the eye, like yeah. unless I had, um, a, um, you know, what might help actually K is there's mirrors that are like magnified. Yes. When I, I, when I use the brush, I feel like I'm using the brush like this way. So the length between my face and the end of the brush gets in the way of the mirror. Yeah. And so I might just need a bigger mirror then because there are like, um, magnifying big mirrors. Yeah. Like there's like the ones that are standing here. Oh, and then the circle. Yeah. And then they flip. Um, that might help because then also you're like also holding and that that might be where it gets hard. Yeah. So trying like one that's already standing. Um, I know there's ones you've seen them and sometimes in hotel bathrooms where like it's attached to the wall and it like extends out and you can like flip them. That might help. OK. Um, no, I totally feel you like in terms of like wanting to do makeup for your glasses and then having to take them off. I think also I just made me need to go see the eye doctor because I haven't done that in a while. And whenever I use my contacts now, like they don't fit right. Like I, for some reason, when I put one in on one side, it always is fine. But the one on the other side, just like it always is a little off. So I feel like I'm switching them out more often. Oh, yeah. Maybe um, you have astigmatism in one eye. I know I do. Yeah, I definitely have an astigmatism. And so my eyes probably change shape and I just haven't gotten yeah. a new uh, examination yet. Yeah. Um, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Any other thoughts or uh, do you have a theme related? To- yes, I do. Cool. Um, the reason it's important to organize your makeup is because and this is OK, let me, this is probably the shortest and cleanest thematic statement I've had. Uh-huh. Um, the reason it's important to organize your makeup and your tools is because you got to know what you have to get it together. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Yes. But like, you know, cause with the, with the Avengers, sorry, with the end, with end game, part of it was them figuring out what they had to fucking get it together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cause they literally pulled like every, you know, Yes. Yeah. My theme is similar where um, in order for Avengers to assemble, you need to know where all your pieces are. Look at that. So great. Well, that's the end of our podcast for today. Um, Thank you for joining us. Um, That's all the time. Thanks for listening and or watching. And if you'd like to reach out to us or find out more about Marvel Makeup, you can follow us on all social media at Marvel Makeup, or you can email us at marvelmakeuppod at (laughs) gmail.com. I think you just read the last line. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. And please give us five stars so that our Asian moms know that despite our German, we love them 3,000 (laughs) K! <laughs> uh, so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they 
Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you next time on Bye. Marvel and Makeup. He's broken me. <laughs>